We have someone here joining us, and of course, it is Matt Ryan. Happy Thanksgiving Eve, Eve Jr. Matt, I am so glad that you are here with us uh, to recap some of the weekend things that we've seen. We talk Chiefs and you talk Lions, two teams who are same record, sitting at 10 and 1, but they feel completely different. And I know Professor Ryan was still high on the Chiefs giving them A's as long as they kept winning, but it just feels so much different than the Lions at 10 and 1. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, right? Um, the object is to win games. Both teams have done an incredible job of that. But you're right, it feels completely different. And for me, it comes down to two reasons. Um, you know, the, the, the biggest statistics in terms of determining wins and losses are turnover margin and explosive plays, gains of 20, 20 yards or more. Detroit, plus nine in the turnover margin. That's uh, tied for third best in the league. And they have 50 plays of 20 plus yards. That's tied for fourth in the league. The Chiefs, on the other hand, are minus five in the turnover margin. That's tied for 23rd worst in the league. And 32 plays of 20 plus yards. That's tied for 26. A lot of stats thrown at you right there. But the Chiefs are in the bottom third in both turnover margin and explosive plays. And the Detroit Lions are in the top five in both those categories. So that's why it feels so different. Detroit's doing the things that you typically do well uh, and win football games, and the Chiefs are not. And so they're finding a way, credit to them. They're kind of walking this tightrope, though, of, of you know close games, one-score games, getting the job done at the end. Ultimately, it doesn't matter how you do it. You just got to find ways to do it. But if the Chiefs are going to go down uh, and, and they're going to make a deep run into the playoffs or, or, or win their third championships, they have to start taking the ball away on defense, and they've got to find a way to create explosive plays on offense. Matt, real quick, because you just kind of painted the picture for both there. You're talking about the Chiefs who have that championship pedigree. The Lions, clearly the face of the NFC based on what we saw from last year when they made it, but coming a little short. Who are you more comfortable with here going the distance, the Chiefs or the Lions between the two? I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say because, you know, if, if you have a championship player like Patrick Mahomes, you always feel comfortable, and he seems to make plays at the end of every game. But if you look at the totality of, of what they've done, I, I think right now you have to say the Lions because they're taking the football away. They're explosive on offense. They're owning the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, offensive line, defensive line, playing physical, shutting down the run, getting after the passer. Uh, right now, to me, as, as a complete package, you know, I look at it and I say the Lions. And with that being said, Jared Goff has taken a team to the Super Bowl in L.A. Mm. They were in the championship game last year. I think they're going to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, which I think it is, uh, is a big advantage for Detroit. Uh, so right now, if you're asking me sitting here today on – what is it, the, the Thanksgiving Eve, Eve Jr., whatever you guys said it was, <laughs> I feel more comfortable with the Lions. Hey, don't, don't come with me in that. It's not you guys. It's on one side of the table, all right? You know? We are a collective. No, and no, Matt, no. when you think about it, if you do the math, Eve, Eve Jr., you, you would go. get to Thursday. There Thank you, you so much, Matt. I know we're not done with you, now. we'll tap back in with you <laughs> in just a little bit. Fresh takes presented by Fresh Pet. It's not dog it's food. It's food. <laughs> food. <laughs> I mean, it was a fresh haircut, too, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, can we talk about the picture? What's the story behind it? I have to ask. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can't remember where that was taken right there. That was, uh, I, I, I obviously didn't have time for a haircut. I was no. just letting it go for a while. It's not good. It's not good. It's giving uh, John Elway vibes a little bit. Here's a picture. It looks, it looks a little Elway S there with the with the haircut. But hey, look. Wait, wait, you, wait, the you, problem you, is it wasn't like 1980. It was like 2008. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh boy, uh, that is a story. But uh, you know, look, you didn't hit a rookie wall, but we saw some others that might have got close this weekend. Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams running into that yesterday. Break down what you saw from both there yesterday. I, I think my first piece of advice would go get a haircut. You know, you're going to take some picture like this. It's going to last forever. So make sure you look good in, in whatever pictures you're taking. But, uh, you know, I, I do think this is the time of the year, right, where uh, rookies and whether it's quarterbacks or guys across the board, as the college regular season is starting to end and you've still got five, six games left on that schedule, um, you know, it, it gets difficult. And so I think, number one, when you look at, Bo Nix and, and you look at Jaden Daniels. They both got bye weeks coming up on week 14, which I think the timing of that on the schedule is huge. Uh, and I think they're both dealing with some kind of injuries too, right? We have Jaden Daniels 
a handful of weeks ago with that rib issue that has never really had a time to get better. Uh, and then Drake May yesterday, you saw him with the hot pack kind of around the midsection. I don't know what's going on there, but something is. So I think that bye week comes at a good time. The other thing I think is, you know, as a coach, you've got to condense game plans, right? Because I think the mental fatigue of the season is is greater than the physical fatigue when you're that age. Uh, this is the first time you're going with new game plans every week. College, you kind of run what you run. But when you get to the NFL, it's very game plan specific. So I think as coaching staffs, you have to condense the game plan. I also think, you know, by all accounts, not only Bo Nix, uh, Jane Daniels, but Caleb Williams, Drake May, all of these guys sound like gym rats, right? And they're in the building and they're grinders. And I think you, as a coaching staff, you've got to get them out of the building. You've got to get them some rest uh, so they're, they're, they're fresh on Sundays. I think the combination of those two things uh, is going to be important to see. But honestly, I think right now, you know, to, to me, the only guy that looks like he's kind of plateauing uh, is, is Jaden Daniels. And maybe it's just because of the production that he had that was so great at the beginning of the year that's kind of flattened off. Uh, so I think they've got to find a way to jumpstart that offense again. Um, you know, the play at the end of the game was spectacular, but they were inconsistent throughout the game. And so uh, I'm looking for, for the Washington Commanders to find a way to jumpstart that offense again. Yeah, those last three games really mirroring the problems that the Commanders have had with overall Jaden Daniels not playing well and the Commanders not playing it well as well. But this is a team that expectations started to come up so much because of how well Daniels was playing. Do you have faith in him specifically to be able to right that ship and get the commands into the playoffs? Uh, you know, I do. I think it's going to be a tough, a, a tough ask because I think you've got two teams in the NFC North uh, in Minnesota and Green Bay that I think are absolutely in. The, the NFC West is, is kind of interesting, too. You know, you've got all four of those teams kind of bunched in that spot. And so the commanders have a record that's better uh, than the others. I believe he's going to do it. I believe they're going to get to the playoffs. Um, I think their bye comes at a good time. Uh, I think they've got to do a good job, though, of, of running the football and using some of that play action pass uh, to kind of help Jaden out. He'll make plays at the end of the game. He's, he's shown that all year. They've got to be better in the first three quarters uh, of the game and, and, and try and play from in front, but I think they can do it. Well, it's, I mean, he's pretty much put the team on his back pretty much the whole season. His teammates will appreciate that. And, and you know what that's feeling like when you put the team on your back and sometimes you might end up on your back. For a certain teammate of yours, he did this yesterday. Take a look at this. Yeah. Nobody competes when they are clicking on all cylinders. I like the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, even though I like my, my burgers on? medium, he's doing a job well done as an MVP. Yeah, mm. fellas, I checked the NFL schedule. They still play the postseason in January, and that's when the Kansas City Chiefs. Ooh, I mean, I can't believe that y'all are taking that fine piece of meat right there with the best head coach and the best quarterback. You come at the king, you best not miss. Oh, okay, uh, Jonathan, what you got here? Oh, I just, you know, I wanted to make sure that we had everything all together. Oh! oh! Oh boy, icy hot coming soon, but look at this. JJ on Twitter there. Uh, by God, looks like JJ was feeling left out after the rest of the crew went full. Bill's Mafia last weekend, and then you see the exclamation mark by JJ. Uh, Matt, I got to get your reaction because we talked about it. You know, it, it didn't have the same effect, but kind of rate what you saw and break down the film on JJ in that ah, moment. Listen, he, he gets an A for effort. Uh, okay. I, I love his attitude going into it and all of this stuff, but you can clearly tell. He's never been tackled uh, because the way he went to the ground, man, like there was just no kind of bracing yourself for impact or anything. He's going to be hurting this morning. He tried to, I'll, I'll give him credit though. He tried to play it off cool, but you could see it all over his face, man. He was hurting. As soon as the camera went off air, we were all kind of checking on him, making sure he was okay. So uh, shout out to JJ for doing it. I give him credit for doing it. Uh, maybe I could teach him a thing or two about being tackled or going to the ground. Yeah, he just tweeted, by the way, uh, Jonathan Jones, day-to-day -day with lower body injuries. So yes. we don't know yeah. when we'll see you again. Rough. <laughs> well, we got a short week this week, too. We got a short week. We got Thursday game. We better get ready to go. Matt